there's a very, very old and beautiful proclamation from the Roman martyrology. And it's proclaimed during the liturgy of the hours or before the midnight mass or the mass at night on Christmas Eve. The 25th day of December, when ages beyond number had run their course from the creation of the world, when God in the beginning created heaven and earth and formed man in his own likeness, when century upon century had passed since the Almighty had set his bow in the clouds after the great flood as a sign of covenant and peace, in the 21st century since Abraham, our father in faith, came out of Ur of the Chaldees, in the 13th century, since the people of Israel were led by Moses in the Exodus from Egypt. Around the thousandth year since David was anointed king, in the 65th week of the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, in the year 752 since the foundation of the city of Rome, in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to consecrate the world by His most loving presence, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And when nine months had passed since His conception, was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judah, and was made man. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh. whole world being at peace. You know, that's our, our serene image of Christmas. This quiet stable, these shepherds, these mysterious strangers from the east, and this little baby. But in the light of the gospel today, clearly, the whole world was not at peace. If a local king named Kerry could be so threatened by the prospect of a new king, that he would set out to kill a baby and be indifferent to his decision to kill all the young children, just to make sure he got the one. <clears throat> the world was not at peace. We're blessed with so many comforts and so many opportunities. We're blessed with so much freedom. And we live day in and day out pretty much in peace. But we know we're not at peace. Officially, we're involved in two wars. We know we're not at peace. We hear about the cultural wars. And they're very, very real. And this tale, and when it kill the baby, get out of here. Savior and his family became refugees early on. The young and helpless are still victims in our world today. The unborn so easily dismissed, just like those innocents were. <clears throat> And still, we long for peace. We pray for peace. Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we call upon Jesus Christ to bless us with peace. 
We turn to one another and we wish peace. But even in our daily lives, it's not always peaceful. These scripture readings for this day are perfect. This beautiful, quiet, serene, peaceful baby was baby Jesus at the 4.30 Mass on Christmas Eve. And she was not peaceful <laughs> at all. But I guess it's her amending baptism that she just in great shape. We long for peace. Sarah Lack of Old talks about the need to respect our parents. Even if they've grown senile, not to grow impatient. To respect and care for them. And St. Paul in the letter to the Colossians, this is chapter 3, you can check it out at home. Listen to this good advice. Clothe yourselves with mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive one another. And over all these, put on the love, which binds the rest together and makes them perfect. And gives thanks. Now there's a path to peace. It goes this way. Things will be very peaceful around here. If you do what I say, and do what I want. And even if that were ever a reality, it wouldn't be peace. Because that trauma attitude is never, ever satisfied. But take Colossians as a guide. And take Joseph as a model. In the scriptures, he never says a word. And in this account, he's so responsive to the call to protect this child, even willing to become an immigrant and start over in a distant land. They return again and start over back home. They call it the hidden life, the silence of Joseph. Now I suppose because he was able to find safe homes for the Holy Family a couple of times, I suppose that's the reason why he's so popular with people selling homes. Bury that statue. Thank you, St. Joseph. <clears throat> but he's a great, great model of care and protection. We live in a world that longs for peace and doesn't have it. And our tendency always is, what are you going to do? And yet the call is, <coughs> what can I do? Here's my hot tip to everyone's family and to yours. Pray together. If you don't say no prayers at home, start. If you don't know one, you can do something like this. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Amen. Pray to him. When someone's leaving, give them a little blessing. Sign a cross on their forehead and simply say, God bless you. They might look at you and say, You can't do that. <laughs> and you can say, Well, he said we could. <laughs> <laughs> Make prayer a part of your life. Bless your children. They might resist it. Bless your grandchildren. They might have no idea what you're doing. And when somebody 
brings you an issue, and you find yourself saying, I'll pray for you, well, don't wait. Do it right out loud, briefly on the side. We long for peace. We have this beautiful model with Joseph and this wonderful, simple guy about being compassionate, forgiving, and merciful, and kind, and thankful. Colossians chapter 3. And we continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, who blesses our own families with the model of his own. May God continue to bless us all.